Hi, Pastor Charlie here with Pastor Charlie's Toolbox. Have you ever wondered if it would be any fun to abuse tools? I know people do it all the time. Uh, take for example the most common one, the chisel, the wood chisel. People drop them in the dirt, on rocks, on concrete, and or they hit a nail going along, hit a nail. And what happens is it puts little nicks in the edge of it and it dulls the chisel and then it doesn't work very well and someone has to go to all the trouble to sharpen it again. Uh, another abuse is when people, they drop a level. <laughs> These things are kind of delicate instruments in some ways and we don't want to be dropping them. One of the things that can happen is you get a broken glass and that's, that's hard to see through. But the other thing that can happen is that a, a level can go all out of whack and, and then it's pretty much useless. Now, if you do accidentally drop one, there's a way to check it. Just show you this. You set it down on something. It doesn't have to be level. And you take a look at it and well, the bubble's off to one side a bit. It's touching the line. The important thing is, when you spin it around and you put it down again, is it still doing that? It is. This level's okay. It's fine. Or maybe you've thought to yourself, you know, I need some firewood. Real quick, where can I get some? I know. I'll take a saw and I'll cut the handle off my wheelbarrow. That'll work great until I want to use the wheelbarrow again. Kind of hard to do without that one handle. Of course, this doesn't just apply to tools. Take something like this motorcycle helmet. I like this one because it has its own sunglasses in it comes right with it. So, <laughs> but something like this, if you drop it even from this height onto a hard surface like a concrete floor, it could get a hairline crack in it, which you might not see, but it makes it unsafe to use. It would break apart too easily if there was an accident. Maybe Maybe you've wondered things like, if I have a shirt here, I wonder, I wonder if, if I can cut that shirt with a pair of tin snips. Let's see how that works. Oh, look. Wow. That works just dandy. Look, there's an arm. Guess the shirt's not much good for anything now. You know, we might think to ourselves, well, that's fine for me if these things belong to me. Because if they belong to me, I can do whatever I want with them. But, what if those weren't my belongings? What if that was your shirt? Would you want me to treat these things that way? If they belong to you. In today's parable from Matthew 21 here, it's a parable about people who were left in charge of a piece of land while the owner was living far away. Now they were allowed to use the land to make a living for themselves, but they were expected to pay rent in return, which, which makes sense, right? The problem was that they started acting as if that piece of property belonged to them. And when we think about it, we can imagine that they might have made changes to it without the owner's consent, or they might have let some things fall apart and didn't bother to repair them, or they may have just inflated their own egos by letting other people believe that they did actually own this land, even when they didn't. Worst of all, when the owner tried to collect the rent, they refused to pay it. 
and they chased away and even killed people who came on behalf of the owner to collect. And then Jesus asks us this question. What will happen to these tenants when the owner shows up? Well, I can let you use your imagination as to what the response would be. Or better yet, you can read it for yourself. Now, we might ask how this relates to us and God. And you could look at the story as being about the planet Earth, the place we live. So often, we humans, we, we treat it as if it belongs to us alone. And that means we can do whatever we feel like with it. And we don't have to think about humans who might come after us, or who actually owns this creation. And while that attitude has made some people very wealthy throughout history, it's also left many more people living in absolute poverty. On top of that, there's increased pollution on this planet, not to mention the warming of the earth, and that could someday get to a point where the oceans rise and actually dry, actually flood low-lying areas where people are now living. They'll have to go somewhere else. And if we keep going with that kind of an attitude, we may also run low on something that is necessary for life itself, which is fresh water. And that's one reason it's a good idea to look at the planet Earth as belonging to God and realizing that we're only here for a while, a little while, and really, we're just looking after it. So let's think about how we are treating this creation that we've been so generously allowed to use for our own benefit. Recycle, use less, buy less, reuse, share resources with others. You know, God's plan never was for us to, to leave the earth in such a shambles that others can't even live on it anymore. God's plan instead is that we enjoy it and benefit from its ability to, to sustain us and keep it that way. We've been given the blessing of being able to use this place for our home, to gain from it. So let's not wreck it like the tenants in our lesson, but remember who this earth actually belongs to.